At the uh, greeters desk, you can fill them out, whatever it is, we will go ahead and pray uh, over that in Jesus' name. If there's a victory report or a prayer request that you have made known, if you find out that whatever that issue was, that God has answered that prayer, please come and tell me. I will take it out of the box, but what I'm doing is I'm thinking, I'm writing it down, saying, God, this is what you did. So that way, if I ever get to a place... Well, I feel like, man, this is hard. And mother, I don't know what to do. I can look back over the victories and the prayers that I prayed and say, well, the Lord, if you did it right here, you can do it again. God, if you didn't fail me right here, you're not going to fail me right now. And so we need that. And so you need to have that and write these things. Sometimes people talk about journals. You need to journal these things down of what God has done for you. Because if not, you'll get to a place and you'll start complaining, saying, God ain't did nothing. And God says, look at the things and the list that I've done for you. What do you mean? I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. I'm always here with you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we thank God. So I want you to remember that. And so I'm not going to hold you long. I'm going to actually to get a lesson here tonight. I'm actually going to have to teach on it more and more, but I'm going to introduce it tonight. I know you might say it's a Sunday night. But it's all right. It's good. The saints are in the house of the Lord. And so I'm going to teach and ask you what was given to me as well, passed down to me. Amen. So let us stand for the reading of the word of God. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2 through 12. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 10, verse 2 to 12. Please remember to keep Minister Corinthians in prayer. Uh, in Jesus' name, I know that he just came out of surgery, so we want to keep him in prayer. Somebody just give him a text or a call and just say, hey, brother, I've been thinking about you. And continue to keep that family in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 rather, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse 2 and 12. And if you have it, just say Amen. And we are actually having on the monitors as well. And the word of the Lord reads, And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. They were overthrown in the wilderness. So once say wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of their destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he understandeth take heed lest he fall. I'm going to talk to you from this subject, being delivered into the wilderness experience. Being delivered into the wilderness experience. Let us pray and ask God to help us in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We give you praise, Jesus, for all that you have done. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, God, all the things that you're doing this hour. Father, this morning I talked about the end times. And Lord God, we know that people are understanding the time that we're living in. And some are rushing, Lord God, to the waters of baptism. Some are rushing to the house of the Lord, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, every soul that is in this house and is baptized and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, every soul that you have delivered out of bondage, out of Egypt, out of this world. Father, I pray that you will sustain them in the house of the Lord. And every saint of God, as we're going through things in this life called life journey and the wilderness, so God experiences, that God, it won't take us out, but that we will stay on the right path on this straight and narrow path. That God, we will make it to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. God, some may get weary, but Lord, I pray that we look out for one another and say, come on, brother. Come on, sister. You can make it. We can make it. And let's keep going. God, we thank you. I bind every spirit of distraction. 
everything that is not like you, everything that comes to hinder. Father, even after the message is over, I pray that we will all be able to say that it was good to be in the house of the Lord, to hear the word of God. Father, bless us today, bless us right now, and use your vessel right now. God, anoint me afresh. In the name of Jesus, we give God glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, clap your hands unto God as you've been seated. In the name of Jesus. They delivered into the wilderness experience. I don't know about you, but when the Lord saved me, I was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. According to the scripture, I was excited. I was so excited because what the word of God said that God would do, I actually was able to say, I have it. I got it, or I'm a part of them that is in the scripture. That's why I tell anybody that say that they're saved, they need to match their salvation experience with the word of God. And so when I got saved, I'm excited. Walking around just telling everybody that even didn't understand it, I got the Holy Ghost. Some people looking at me like, what? I got the Holy Ghost. I got the shown up Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues. I got baptized in the name. You want me to show you? I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I can show you the scripture. I can show you the scripture of everybody that got baptized in the name of Jesus. I was so confident, so excited. I was walking around like, you need this thing. And you need to come to church with me. Don't tell me about your religion. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And you need to be delivered. You need to be saved. I was just so excited. I didn't know much. All I knew was Acts chapter 2 verse 38. But I was ready to teach somebody a Bible study. I was ready to start preaching. Pastor, you can put me up. I can preach. I can preach. What you gonna preach? Acts chapter 2 verse 38. I was so excited. I was filled with joy. I was letting everybody know. I wasn't making up no tongues. I wasn't talking about coming in a mosquito. I wasn't talking about coming in a Honda. I was really talking. I was speaking in tongues. I wasn't faking it. But I had what was in the scriptures. I had what the word of God said that it was promised unto me. How many of you that you can look back and think when God saved you, what would be your reaction? Because sometimes we get to the house of the Lord and when we talk about Acts chapter 2 verse 38, the saints can get into a place that we start applauding and doing a golf applaud. That was good. That was good. But for me, I'm never going to get tired of when the Lord saved me. I'm never going to get tired of talking about Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I'm never going to get tired of it. So if you say, Pastor, can you teach about something else? I can't think about something else. But what needs to be started first is Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Everything needs to start there and then we'll move to other things. But how many people are excited that God filled them with the Holy Ghost? How many people are excited that they went down in the name of Jesus Christ? How many are excited that you're counted as one of them that are part of the church of the living God? Don't give me no golf clap. You just need to just tell them, tell God, God, I'm so excited. I'm grateful. I'm thankful that you chose me. Because I got family members that are not in the house of the Lord. I got friends that are not in the house of the Lord. I got neighbors that are not in the house of the Lord. So am I special? No, you ain't either. You ain't special. God chose you. And because he told you something about you that you need to say, to God be the glory. God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I glorify you. Don't you act like God had to do it. Don't you act like God had to save you. Don't you act like God had to tell you the truth. You could have been in a dumpster when you were a baby. You could have been forgotten about. But thanks be to God that God looked out and he looked at you and said, I want this one and I'm holding this one for my own. We give God praise. Come on, clap your hands up to God. Thank God. I'm thanking God that he saved me. This salvation is so great. I was letting me know how can they, how can we, we talking about us, uh, neglect so great salvation. I can't neglect this thing. I got to have this thing. I got to be all involved in this thing. Amen? Amen. But when I got saved, nobody ever told me that there was going to be a wilderness experience. 
I got saved, and I remember the mother say, "Praise him, pray, let him praise him, praise him, let him praise him." Go ahead, let him, let him speak in tongues, let him speak in tongues, and, and let him shout, let him shout. Go ahead, let him shout, let him do that, and you just walk around, just so smiling, just praise the Lord, everybody. You just so excited, praise the Lord, sister. Uh, what's wrong? I'm just so excited. I'm a part of the family. I'm so excited that I'm a part of the, the relationship with God. I, I got a real relationship, but it was right after that nobody came and told me. That as soon as you joined with the army of the Lord, that you was on the battlefield. And things started happening. And I said, what's, what's going on? The, 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 the tongues, the tongues ain't, ain't there like it used to be. I'm not dancing like I used to was. I'm not shouting right. Because thoughts are coming and things are coming and stuff is happening in my mind. and I, Stuff is coming in my heart and all of these different things. Nobody told me about the wilderness experience. When you walk with God, it's all about becoming like Jesus. And God takes us through the test and different things in our life to form us. God is not into building. I heard a pastor tell me this, Pastor Hughes. He mentored me. Well, I've been in the gospel. One of the men that mentored me, he said to me, listen, God is not into building resumes. He's not into building your resume." Trying to put notches up under your belt. He's not into doing it. What he's trying to do is make you more like him. And so when I didn't understand that, I was saying, God, you've forsaken me. You gave me the Holy Ghost. You baptized me. You gave me your word. I was shouting. I was praising you, God. I was in prayer. I pray. What are you doing? I don't hear you. I don't feel you. This don't feel like I'm loved. And I, I don't feel a problem. I feel like you, you won't be around. And, I, and I'm feeling these things. And all of these things are happening to me. Nobody ever told me about the wilderness experience. And then when I look at Moses, the Bible says that when God called Moses, Moses, he was brought up in Pharaoh's house. But Moses was an Israelite, a Hebrew. And God said when he raised up Moses, Moses then began to go out into the desert. When he began to find out who he really was. But it was 40 years that as he was in that desert, and as he's going through this, God is working out Moses. And God is getting Moses prepared for the things that he was going to do. God was getting Moses to be a shepherd. Shepherd to what? To bring people out of bondage. And God was using Moses to do this. And Moses was going through different things in his life. And Moses was dealing with so many things. And Moses had excuses just like we do. Lord, I can't speak. I stutter. What do you mean? You want to use me? What do you mean, God? Thank God that you delivered me. But now you're trying to get me to go through some things to what? So I can be used by you? God, I don't know if I really want this. And I, I don't even like this. I don't know like to be big. And, and many of us are like it. We don't like to go through some things. That's why we'll always pray, God, get me out of this thing. God, get me out of this. But Jesus would say, I thought you said you wanted to be like me. I thought you were praying. What you praying that you wanted to be like me? Well, here it goes. I'm going to put some finance issues in your life that you're going to have to trust me. I'm going to put some problems in your life and you're going to have to look to me. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to endure. You're going to have to suffer. You're going to go through this. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be rejected. Doors are going to be closed in your face. Illness is going to come up on your body. You're going to be hungry. You may not have a place to stay. Every bill may not be paid. But thanks be to God. What is he doing? He's making me over so I can be more like him. So I give God praise. And I thank God. Wilderness experience is not always smiles. I, I, I remember sometime the first time I came to Bishop. Uh, Bishop, and, and, and I came to him, I said, uh, Bishop, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going through this and, and I'm dealing with this and you know he's older so he's wise he's been through so many other things and so when you come to the elders and he's trying to try to talk to them about certain things sometimes they'll laugh at you and you'll get an attitude of why they laughing talking about oh son it'll be all right you say uh oh, don't you see what I'm going through I'm going through this I'm going through this burning furnace and, and I'm going through this and I feel like one of the Hebrew boys and that you about to, I'm about to get burnt up in it and he laughs and said oh <laughs> you're gonna be all right no 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 I I need you to call down heaven and angels to stop this thing. Oh, son, you're going to be okay. And I'm saying, what is this that's going on? I started to find out that he began to tell me. And he summed it up like this. Son, it's life's journey. And I said, life's journey? Well, who put that part of this? I, I didn't ask for that. I, I didn't, I, you, 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 do, I have a, do I have a choice in that? Take that journey back. I don't want to go down that road. I don't want that. Give me another road to go down but he began to say, it's just life's 
journey. That you're going to go through some things. And some things are just going to be for life. And some things the devil is going to be coming after you for certain things. Son, just go through. Which is why the Bible always said, anytime you read the scripture where it says be encouraged, that means trouble is on the way. Anytime you read the scripture where it says be encouraged, that means something is coming. That means that you got to gird up your loins and you got to just begin to say, for God I live and for God I die. Even if you say it with a tear coming down in your face, you just got to just gird up and say, for God I live. Square your shoulders back and say, God, you're not the devil. You're not going to take me out. I'm going to stand here with the Lord. I know you might feel like you're by yourself and I know you might feel like you're going through something. I know you might feel like, Lord, have you forsaken me? But God is saying, I'm not forsaken. I'm with you. I'm building you up. Can I shape you? Can I mold you? Come on. Come on. Be the potter. Can I mold you? Can I shape you? Can I make you to what I need you to be? Which means I'm going to have to bend you. Some things you're not going to want to be bent on and some things you're not going to want to have to go through. Some messages that you're not going to want to hear. But God is talking right to you to do what? I'm shaping and I'm molding you. You want to know why you got the boss at your job that you have? Because God is working on your patience. You want to know why your boss don't like you? Because God is dealing with your attitude. You want to know why you go through do what you're doing because God is dealing with your lack of submission. You know why things ain't the way that you want them to be because God wants you to get your life organized. These things come to do what? To shape you and to mold you. That's why if you get people around you that don't want to be shaped or molded, you got to say, get away from me. I'm trying to be more like Jesus and you are causing a conflict with me getting my breakthrough. So I don't want to stay in this place too long. So there's somebody around me keeping me from getting where I need to do. Or you trying to uphold the process. I need you to move. Because I can't stay here too long. I'm going to stay here as long as God has wanted me to be here. Lord, whatever you're trying to teach me, help me to learn. And so what God talks to us in the Old Testament, he teaches us about typology. Bishop talked me on that regarding typology. Typology. Typology from the Word of God. There's certain typology. How many have ever heard that term before? Typology. Anybody have heard of that term? Well, let me give you an understanding of what I'm talking about. Typology. A type of something. So when you read the Old Testament, God is showing us this is a type of something here. This is a type of what's in the New Testament. This is a type of something. And so when you think about Egypt, when you think about Egypt, Egypt is a type of the world. Egypt is a type of the worldliness. It's a type. Think about the children of Israel, which is a type of the child of God here in the spiritual. We are spiritual children of God. Amen? And so you think about Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. And think about the taskmasters, those who beat upon the Hebrew Israelite, or the Hebrews, rather, those who beat upon Israel, those who pretty much put them in task and pretty much hurt them and pretty much caused all of these terrible things to come up on them. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh was a hard taskmaster. Pharaoh would do so certain things. He would treat them so bad and he would treat them so wrong and he, they would feel like to the point where there was no help. They're crying out and they want to be delivered from the bondage that they're in. And some people are addicted to drugs out in the world. Some people are addicted to different types of things of, of fornication and sexual morality. Some are addicted to so many other things that are out there and the devil is beating you down. That's why you can look at some people and they say, how old are you? And they will tell you, I am 21, but they look about 45. What does that mean? That means the devil been wearing them out. That taskmaster been beating on them out in their world. That taskmaster been causing havoc and problems in their world. And so what I'm talking about is that Egypt is a typology of the world. So when we say certain things, stop looking like the Egyptians or come out of that Egypt world or stop Stop thinking the way the Egyptians think. What do we say? Stop thinking worldly and stop thinking carnal minded. Stop being carnal. Stop thinking like the world thinks. We need to come out of Egypt and be delivered from Egypt. And when Israel was delivered, they were praising God because it was about 400 years. Could you imagine being in sin? Some of us understand what I'm talking about. If you just said, well, hey, it was 20 years when I was out in that world before I came into God. And now that you're in the house of God, you can look back over your life and begin to think that I was going through some crazy stuff. I was addicted to this. I should have been dead. I should have been killed. I should have been still addicted to that. I was on heroin and I was on this 
type of drugs. I was on marijuana. I was smoking this and I was smoking dope and I was doing this. I was with this woman in the bed. I was with this brother in the bed and I was could have caught diseases. I could have done this and I was doing this. I could have been in an accident because I was drunk over here. I was drinking. I was drinking out my mind. I used to gamble in the drag in the gamble. I was raising money. I couldn't even feed my children because I was doing what? Gambling with the money. All of these things is like a hard taskmaster making you and forcing you to do what you don't want to do. That's why sometimes people in the world will say, we're going to go to this 12-step program and then you find them. Maybe they may be good off for a couple of times, but then all of a sudden, they're back into rehab. Why? Because they were not delivered. That's why many times we say, listen, when you come to the altar and you want the Holy Ghost, you got to get the show of Holy Ghost. Because if you ain't got the show of Holy Ghost, when you leave this house, you're going to get entangled back with everything that you said that you were coming out of. That's why you meet a real church that's going to preach the real word of God to let you know what God wants you to do. And you better make sure that that pastor has the anointing on his life that when he prays, heaven hears. Amen. We need saints in the house of God the same way that when you pray, heaven hears. To break every stronghold, every chain, and every yoke that is upon the people in Bell Place, everything that is in your life that you are addicted to, pornography, whatever it is, God has said, listen, I'm here. If it's an attitude adjustment, if it's a, if it is a lack of submission, whatever it is, God said, I come to break those things. I come to break that in Bell Place. I come to break that. And if it's been something that you have been dealing with, God is always going to bring it up front to show you this is who you are. And he will use the man of God to show you this is exactly who you are. And this needs to be broken. You might say, he's talking about me and he's trying to show me up and he's trying to, and I don't feel no love and I don't feel this. Is God talking to you? He's showing you. I got to show you what you look like first. I got to show you who you are. So you can see. And when you begin to say, God, I don't like what I'm seeing. I, I, I really don't like this, God. And this was not like you. You were humble and, 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 and you were patient, God. And you did things and you didn't have to do it. And so what I'm looking at myself and I, I got this way about myself. I don't want this. And God is trying to show you. If you look yourself in the mirror, in the word of God, he'll show you this is how I am. And when I'm reading, I begin to cry, God, I got a long way to go. God, I'm not where I need to be. God, I need your help, God. God, don't leave me like this. Because God, if you leave me like this, I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it. I know you got the Holy Ghost. I know that you got baptized. But the Bible says, follow peace with all men, without which holiness, those without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So if holiness is not in you, if purity is not in you, if the heart is not changed, if the mind is not renewed, you're not going to see God. I don't care if you speak in tongues like a Chinese laundry man. You better make sure that your life is changed. Your attitude is changed, your mind is changed, that you live right, that you do it right, that you're walking up right. God is looking for people that want to be right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I say, as times I go in my prayer closet, I'm by myself, I can keep it real with God. And sometimes we need to be real with God. When you go and say, God, fix me. Fix this boy right here. Fix me right now. God, I don't want to come out of this prayer closet until I feel a change. I'm almost wrestling like Jacob did. I'm not letting go until you bless me. I'm not letting go until you change my attitude. I'm going to hold on to this altar. And God, you got to, I want you to, Lord God, if I got to dig deep, if I got to fast, if I got to fast 40 days, if I got to put away this, if I got to turn off the TV, if I got to turn off people, if I got to stay off of Facebook, whatever. Whatever it is, God, I need you to change me. Deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. And so Egypt is considered as the world. And Pharaoh is a type of Satan and the devil. And Moses is a type of Christ. 
He's a type of Christ, or he's a shepherd. And in our day, we say he's the pastor. Bishop Moses was the one that brought it, that God used to bring the people of God out. And Moses was a person. The Bible says he was more faithful in all of his house. That means Moses was God. The Bible says God talks to Moses face to face. I talked to Moses face to face. And so you will see how people were. Some people rebelled against Moses. And God let them know, hey, this is the one that I set up. And he's a type of Christ. And so when you look at Moses, Moses would be like a shepherd or a pastor. And all Egyptians, all worldly people, and all carnal people hate shepherds or pastors. Let me say that again. If you're around people that don't want to obey or submit, they hate Egyptians and worldly people and carnal people hate shepherds. They feel that they are abomination and I'm following, I'm not doing it. I don't care what you say. They hate it. They hate shepherds and they hate pastors. But the only way that you're going to be delivered is you got to use what God has put in place in your life. It's not about the man. It's not about Moses. But God used Moses to deliver. And every time the people would get in trouble, it was Moses that was falling on his face. And God, have mercy upon him. God, God, if you strike them down, how? Lord God, the Egyptians going to say that they could, you brought them out, but you couldn't bring them in. And so it's the shepherd, and that shepherd is wanting the best for you. I love everybody in this place, and I want to see everybody safe. And so this is when I read the word of God. This is how I was. When I first got over to Tampa, I was not really feeling Bishop Davy. You might say, whoa, I was not really feeling him. Why? Because I wasn't where I needed to be, and I still got a long way to go. But I'm telling you, there are some things that I wasn't, but the only way that I was going to be delivered, I needed some instructions. I needed somebody to give me some instruction or to talk to me and to let me know who I was. I told you I was his armor bearer. I was his armor bearer, so I stuck with Bishop. I learned things, but there was things that he was saying that I really wasn't feeling. But it was beginning God to work on me, to show me who I was, to show me where I was, to let me know, son, you got to see that you need to be delivered. If anybody don't see that you need to be delivered, you're never going to be delivered. If you feel like, ain't nothing wrong with me, I'm cool. I got it together. I got it like this, and this is how I'm going to be. Can't nobody change me, because this is who I am. This is how I am, and this is what I'm going to be. Then you ain't going to never be changed. You ain't going to never be delivered. So that's why when we get people to come in the house of God, we want them to see while God looks at them. That's why we preach the word of God like we do. We preach it the way that God wants us to preach it. So when you hear it, you can be able to say, God don't like me doing this. No. He wants you to do what? Change. Yeah. Yeah. Genesis chapter 46 verse 34. Make it simple for me in the NLT. You must tell him, we, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives as our ancestors have always done. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen. For the Egyptians, look at what it says, despise shepherds. Anybody say to me, I love God, I'm a prophet, I got the Holy Ghost, and all of this stuff. My next question to you is, who's your pastor? Who's your pastor? Because if you say, I got a pastor, or I don't have a pastor, or I just go to church, I'm going to say, you got a long way to go. Because everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs a shepherd. Because we are all sheep. Amen. If you say, well, I ain't a sheep, that means you're a goat. And I'm not trying to be a goat. I want to be a sheep. Amen. Let's look at four points. I'm going to make it very quick. Number one, the beginning struggles of being delivered from Egypt or the world. What are some of the, 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 the struggles that we have when we're trying to preach to people to tell them to come out from this world or from Egypt? Look at Exodus chapter 8 verse 25 through 26. Look at what the Bible says. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, it is not me so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, 
Shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? But notice what Moses said to him. In Exodus 8 and 27, we must take a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, just as he has commanded us. When you are trying to be delivered from Egypt or from this world, that devil, Pharaoh is looked at as a type of Satan. Pharaoh is looked as a type of Satan. And that Satan, that devil, does not want you to be delivered. So what does he say? When a person is ready to change their life, what is Satan saying? He said, you can have church or you can go to church as long as you are not transformed. As long as there is no change in your life. I don't mind you going to this type of church down there. I don't mind you going to this church or that church or this church or that church. As long as there is no change in your life. So you're talking about you want to do this? Okay. But this is what I'm telling you to do. I don't want you to. Listen to what it says. As long as you don't go to a real church where the preacher is going to let you know that Satan or that devil or that Pharaoh said, you stay right here. If you want to have church, that's fine. But as long as you don't go too far. Moses began to say, uh-uh, we can't stick around here. We got to go three days. We got to go away from this place. We got to go head out to where God is telling us. And this is how Satan was. He doesn't want you to ever, what, go too far. He wants to be able to kind of keep a hold on you some way and somehow. However I can keep a hold on you, you, can, you want to go and worship? No problem. Right there down to that church right over there. And he knows that church, there is no power, there was no Holy Ghost, and there is no truth. But go on over there. If you want to go over there, that's fine. But when you start making your way to the real place where they worship God in spirit and in truth, when you start doing things the way that the Bible says to do, he don't want you to go that far. But you got to let that devil know, listen, I got to go to the house of the Lord. I got to go where God wants me to be. I got to be where God wants me to be. I got to be delivered. I got to get out of this place because all you trying to do is keep me where I am. And if I stay where I am, I'm not going to be delivered. So devil, let me go. Get your hands off of me. Get your hands off of me. I got to go. I got to get out of here. When it comes to the church, we should want God to change everything about us. So when I come to the house of the Lord, I got to go to a place where God is going to change me. Which is why David said this in Psalms 139, verse 22 to 24. It said, search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, what are you seeing when you see me? What are you seeing my attitude? What are you seeing what I'm thinking? What are my thoughts on? What am I doing at home? What is my conversation like? And what am I looking at? And, and, and what am I involved in? Who am I involved with? God, what's going on? Why am I angry? Why am I upset? And why am I mad? And why am I doing this? And why am I cursing? And why am I doing this? And why am I watching? Why am I with this person? I want you to see if there's some wicked things in me. Look at me. Because I can make you feel like I'm okay. I can smile in your face and say, I'm blessed and highly thankful. I'm blessed. Praise the Lord, sis. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. In that deep voice. Praise the Lord. But you got trouble in your life. You got things stirring up all around you. You got problems that you're thinking about. You matter of fact thinking, I'm ready to leave church. I'm ready to leave this church and I ain't coming back. I'm tired. I'm done with this and I ain't feeling it no more. But God is trying to show you where you are so you can begin to call on the name of the Lord. Lord, save my life. Before I fall into shipwreck. Psalm 51 verse 10 to 12. Created me a clean heart. O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. God when I first got the Holy Ghost. I need the joy of my salvation. God when you first baptized me. Give me that joy back. Because God where I'm at. I'm not in a good place. And God if I'm not in a good place. I can go somewhere else. And I'll still have a problem. Because I took whatever the problem was. It was in me God. I need you to shake it and get this. Out of me right now. I want to be delivered. 
Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore it unto me. The joy of thy salvation uphold me with thy free spirit. But notice verse 13. Once I do this in verse 2 and 10 and 12, this is what the Bible says. Then will I teach transgressors their ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. When you get me right, God, I can help somebody else. When you get me right, I can teach a Bible study like I should. When you get me right, I can pray for somebody else. When you get me right, I can talk to you. I can help you. I can get you to where you need. But God, you got to work on me before I can help somebody else. God wants us to totally disconnect ourselves from the world. Which is why Pastor preached in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 7. And it says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out. Tell your neighbor, come out. Tell your neighbor, we got to come out. We got to come out of this bondage. We got to come out of these things that the devil still have the yoke up on our neck. You might be thinking I'm good, but God says come out. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That's why I don't hook up with everybody. I don't hang out with everybody. Everybody, even though I'm not creating discord in the church, but if you ain't trying to live right, if you don't want to do right, if you want to walk right, I got to disconnect myself because I've got to be saved. Nobody in this place is going to say, Pastor Carmen, you did this or you did that because I'm telling you, if my intention is all about souls being saved because I got to stand before God one day and nobody is that special for my soul to be lost. I love you. I do. But my soul got to be saved. Which leads me to my second point. The devil wants us to stick close to the place of bondage. That's why sometimes people say, I say to you, how's everything going? Are you still around that stuff? Well, yeah, I still do this and I still do that. God is saying, listen, you got to come away from that stuff. You can't stick around those things that will cause you to be in bondage. Exodus, Exodus chapter 8, verse 28. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only, look at what it says. The devil always knows he got something up under his sleeve. Only. Ye shall not go very far away in treat for me. As long as you don't go too far away, as long as you don't get out of the click, as long as you don't separate yourself, as long as you don't start going to church all the time, as long as you don't start reading that Bible, as long as you can still come to the club with us, as long as you can still watch this stuff with us, as long as you can still participate in this conversation, as long as you can still be around the things that are evil, that devil does not want you to go too far. He wants us to be close enough to the world so that we can still see it and have a view of it. But I don't want a view of the world. That's why when you say, well, I've been delivered. I've been delivered from alcohol. You ain't gonna never see nobody up in a no bar talking about, I'm going to do outreach. Why? Because that's where he delivered me out of. You ain't gonna see me in the clubs because that's where he delivered me out of the clubs. You ain't gonna see me walking around people smoking weed. Why? Because that's where he delivered me out of. You ain't gonna see me hanging out with the thugs. Why? Because that's where he delivered me out of. I got to get away or disconnect myself from where he delivered me out of. Come on, people of God. We got to disconnect from this world. Got to disconnect from party lifestyle. People that, went, that I used to hang out with, the people, places that I used to go, and conversations that I used to have. I, I understand we have Facebook, and I'm not trying to say I'm coming against Facebook because we have Facebook here. But there's sometimes that when I think about Facebook, what does Facebook do? It allows you to bring up your old friends. And I say, many times, I ain't looking at no old chick. I don't want to see no old female that I used to talk to and did this and do that. I was married now. I got a wife now. I was married now. I got my baby with me now. I don't want to see you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care about what changes you made. I don't care. Hey, Otis, how you doing? Don't talk to me. I got a bear. I'm wearing now. I got a wife. I'm coming out from this world. And I can't let this world get me connected back in. God brings you out of something. He wants us to go far away from it as possible. You were involved in sexual sins or fornication. He says this to us in 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. Flee fornication. And don't try to tell me I'm praying through. What does it say? 
flee fornication. Let me say that one more time. If you've had a problem with sexuality, I know we're all human. You have desires. But if you ain't married you yet, flee. What does that say? Run. Put your track shoes on and get up out of there fast as you can. Run and flee. Stop talking about I'm sanctified and I'm praying through. He never tells you to pray it through. He says, run. Flee. Get out of there. Move. Somebody may say, oh man, you weak. Yes, sir. This flesh is weak. I know the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. I got to get out of here and run. Run. Move your arms. Run. Pick up your feet. Hot step. Hot step. And get out of there. Flee. Fornication. Every sin that the man doeth without the body, he that committed fornication sin against his own body. I'm going to revisit it one day, but let me move to the third point. The devil would like to divide your family. Did you know, Brother Omar, the devil wants to divide your family? Did you know that the devil wants to divide your family? Did you know that the devil doesn't want you and your family to be in the house of the Lord? So whatever he can, whether it's your husband, whether it's your wife, whether it's your children, no matter if you say, well, whether it's you and your mom, whatever it may be, yes, he wants to divide your family. Family. He hates marriage. It's not a marriage seminar, a marriage, or I'm telling you, he hates marriage and he hates families that are together, which is why he tries to get the man out of the house, to get separated from his children, separated out of the house of God, separated from his wife, which is why you would think, was Eve standing by herself talking to the devil? If Adam would have came around and said, devil, get your mouth out of my wife, baby, come on over here, then things maybe would not go the way we did, but what is that devil trying to do? Separate and divide and conquer in the family, even in the house of the Lord. That's why you have church splits. Because the devil comes in and splits up the household. The devil is a liar. You have no authority. You have no right to be here. And I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you right now. Every demon, every demonic spirit that wants to rise up, that wants to bring division. Father, right now, tear it down in the name of Jesus. Moses went back to Pharaoh to tell him, let my people go. Pharaoh said, not so. Exodus 10 and 11. Go now, ye that are men. Serve the Lord. Only let the man go. But leave your wives and kids here. Let the man go out there. But leave your wives here. That means he's splitting the family. When the family is split, the devil can come in and terrorize. Which is why you have the life that we live today. Children don't know who their fathers are. Daughters are not, have not been validated. So the way that they think, they just take and accept anything. Because dad is not there. And I'm saying to every child of God in this place, just because dad or mom went through that, that does not mean you are having to go through that as well. Amen? Amen. Just because you was like that for mama, don't you start taking on stuff. Well, this is how I was raised, and this is what mama, and this is what happened, this and that. The devil is a liar. When you went down in the name of Jesus, all of that was cut off of you. When you got filled with the Holy Ghost, you got God's spirit on the inside. So don't bring them and say, well, this is how I am. Because all things are passed away, and all things become new. I'm a new creature. I don't do that no more. So I'm not going to use the excuse of the way that I was born in my lifestyle. Thanks be to God. You brought me out of that dump. Kevin wants to divide the family. That's why John chapter 10 verse 10 says the thief cometh not. But to what? To steal and to kill and to destroy. And I've said this many times. There's one thing when you want to steal from me. Even if you say the things like, man, you know, I'll kill you. I'll take you out because you're talking about me. But when you say I want to destroy you, that takes it to another level. That means you want to totally, totally annihilate me. That means you really don't like me. You want to destroy me? You want to destroy me? Not just hurt me, but you said, I want to hurt your wife. I want to hurt your children. I want to hurt your baby Zoe. I want to hurt everything about you. Everything that you connected to. You are part of Bell Glade New Life. I want to hurt that church. If you are part of this, I want to hurt your job, your business. I want to hurt this and I want to hurt that. Everything. 
thing that you are a part of, that devil says, I want to hurt it. I'm going 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 to destroy it. And the devil is a liar because I know what he's trying to do. I already got the upper hand. I already got the upper hand because I know what you're trying to do. And you can't do it here, devil. You can't do it here because Jesus says, I come. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. What does that mean? God, whatever you don't give me, you're going to let it run over. You're going to let it run over that the devil can't have no room to come in and steal and kill and destroy. Come on, people of God. Tell the devil, you are a liar. One, one is all, when we all get into Jesus, this is how it happens. I can start off with the marriage. When the wife says, I want to live for Jesus. He can use the husband and say, well, I don't want to go to that church. And then the wife can't really go in and do what God has called her to do because she's connected with her husband. We don't believe in divorce. But I'm telling you, it causes problems. That's why we tell the young ladies and the young men, don't just go marry anybody. You better make sure that they are saved in the house of the Lord. Because how can two walk together except they agree? You might say, but he's handsome. He's a devil in disguise. You might say, but she got it going on. You better look out because you're connected to Jezebel. I'm trying to tell you, people of God, that this devil wants to divide us. And he wants to divide and conquer. That's how he's going to do America. What is he doing? We're going to go down. Why? Right? Because he's coming in from the inside. He can't fight us from the outside. So let me find a crack or a door open. Let me find a window open. Oh, there it is. They're not even paying attention. Let me go in and squeeze on in. And now you looking around talking about what in the world is going on. What's happening? He got in somehow. He got into a crack. He was able to get in somehow. He was able to slide in somehow. And somebody wasn't praying. Somebody wasn't fasting. Someone, somebody wasn't declaring. Somebody wasn't putting blessed over her. Somebody wasn't waking up in the middle of the night when God was trying to wake you up. Sometimes God will wake you up and say, get in and pray. You need to start praying. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray. Brother, you got to get up. Get up. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. Because why? That devil is trying to get it. He got in. He got in. But if you get up and pray now, you can stop what he's trying to do. People of God, that's why we got to pray. We got to fast. We got to pray and watch, watch and pray in the name of Jesus. Which leads me to my last point. Devil will try to keep you from truly worshiping and sacrificing to God. You get delivered out of bondage of out of this world, Egypt. He's going to try to keep you from truly worshiping and sacrificing to God. Look at Exodus chapter 10, verse 24 to 26. Make it simple for us in the NLT version. It says, finally, Pharaoh called for Moses. Go and worship the Lord, he said. Leave your flocks and your herds here. You may even take the little ones. Go ahead and take the family with you there. Look at what it says. No. <coughs> Moses understood. No. That's why I tell you today, tell that devil, no. Whatever he's trying to offer you, you say no. You must provide us with animals, sacrifices, and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. All, look at what it says, all our livestock must go with us. Two, not a hoof can be left behind we must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from among these animals. And we won't, we won't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. That means everything that I have, everything that God has given me, I'm going to use it to sacrifice unto God. You give me a job, God, I'm going to sacrifice it unto you. If you give me a raise, God, I'm going to give it back to you. God, whatever it is, if you let me sing, I'm going to sing unto you. If you want me to teach, I'm going to teach it unto you. I'm not doing it unto a man. I'm not doing it unto Pastor. I'm doing it unto God. So whatever you do, you say, God, I'm doing it unto you. I'm doing it unto you. The devil is trying to keep me to shut up. I won't shut up at all. I'm going to teach. I'm going to say it. Come on, people of God. That devil don't want you to teach him. He don't want you to preach him. He don't want you to come to the house of God. He don't want you to take that class. He don't want you to learn. He don't want you to sing in the pulpit. He don't want you to come up and preach him. He don't want you to be a minister. He don't want you to be a minister. He don't want you to be a prayer warrior because he knows he's going to have problems. He don't want you to get involved in his things. So he begin to say, don't sacrifice. Don't give God a 
hallelujah. Give him a little hallelujah. Don't open up your mouth. Don't praise him. I got to praise him. And when I praise him, I got to give him what's perfect. I got to give him a perfect praise. That's why when I shout, I shout for real. That's why when I go in time, I go in time for real. That's why when I clap my hands, I clap my hands for real. That's why when I run around for God, I run around for good. I run around. I play these drums. I play these drums. I do everything that God has given me, and I leave nothing in reserve. Come on, people. Open up your mouth and praise God, and leave nothing in reserve. It is the devil's job, and he wants to keep you from worshiping the Lord. That's why it's a battle because that devil wants you to worship him. That's why he told Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, if you would just bow down. Don't you understand people of God, that devil just wants you to bow down. Don't go back to church. You went in the morning. Why are you going to go back tonight? Well, when you go, just sit in the back. Way, way, way in the back. Don't give him what he wanted to do. With him. But I'm telling you, you got to give God something more. You got to say, no, devil. You trying to tell me not to worship him. He's the true God Because when you don't give your all to him You're leaving something in reserve for the devil And nothing is going to give I ain't giving him nothing He wants to kill me You think I'm going to give you something? No To God be the glory For all the things that you've got But Jesus is God And I shall magnify him And I shall lift him up only Not you devil I'm walking upon the devil Every time you pray You're walking on that devil's head Every time you give him glory you are walking on the devil's head. That's why that devil says, don't sacrifice. No, 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 no. You can't fast right now. You can't fast right now. You about to go on this vacation. You can't fast. You can't do that right now. Ain't you proud to play the food? They barbecue in the bar. The family barbecuing. It's that good barbecue. Brother Smith is cooking tomorrow. We can't fast. We can't fast. He's cooking on our tail. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm telling you, don't pray. Don't come to church and pray. Don't pray at home. Don't give. Somebody say, you pay a tithes. They don't do that. They do it in the Old Testament. That's under the law. The devil is a liar. Tithes is before the law. The law put it in order. But Abraham tithed. And Abraham was before the law. And so what they did in the Old Testament is an example of what we should do now. I got to pay tithes. I got to give. When I give, I'm not giving to my pockets. I'm not giving to the bishop's pockets. I'm giving unto God. God, where is the help needed in the house of the Lord? What do the children need? What does the man of God need? What do you need, brother? Do you need anything for your family? Do you need anything for your children? What does the house need? The lights got to stay on. The bills got to be paid somehow. Why? We won't have a place of worship. We won't have a place to come to. If the lights are not paid, you are in the air conditioner. You ain't sweating. I'm sweating. But you are in air conditioner. And so when you come to the house of God, we're sacrificing. We're giving what? For the kingdom of God to go forward. So he says, don't praise. Don't go back to church. And this is the one. Don't submit. Don't just submit. Don't do that. He knows when you submit, you're doing it unto God. And anytime you're doing it, you are looking more like Jesus. He humbled himself to the death of his cross. He didn't have to do it. So when you begin to submit, when you begin to tell this flesh, flesh, come down. And you put this flesh under subjection. What are you doing? I'm looking like my daddy. I got to look like my daddy. Jesus. That's who I got to look like. So whether you tell me, Bishop, to do this or to do that, I must submit myself. It's not unto the man. But it's unto the man, the God that is in the man. We must sacrifice because that brings you into the presence of God. You say, you know, it brings, when you sacrifice it, yes, people of God. It brings you into the presence of God. Let me give you scripture, Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Look at verse 16. Make it simple for me, sir. And don't forget to do good 
and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Let us stand. You say, well, Pastor, well, what about the wilderness part? You're talking about being delivered. You know, I'm going to teach on that. We're going to revisit this. But I'm going to conclude with this. My conclusion is, and once you have been delivered, you're going to go into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, I must keep the faith. In the wilderness, I cannot murmur. I cannot complain. Because what he started in me, he's going to finish. So God, if you saved me, if you gave me the Holy Ghost, you baptized, I got baptized in your name. And you set me in this place. I didn't ask to be a pastor. I didn't ask for that at all. But if you put me here, you're faithful, Lord, to finish what you started. Finish what you started, God. Somebody here today, you might be feeling like you want to give up. You might be tired. You might be upset. You might be angry or even mad. But what you need to do right now is say, God, let me put that foolishness to the side. Finish what you start. And the wilderness is not something that's going to be for one day. It's until the Lord comes back. When the Lord comes back, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. The people of God, be of good courage. You're going to make it through. There's, that's why we tell people to tell their testimonies from jobs, from different things, from being healed, things in their life that they've experienced. Because it builds up our faith to say, God, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I know you want me to be saved. I'm just asking you, hold my hand and get me there. Let me not lean on to my own understanding. And in all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord. Tell me what to do. My last verse tonight is 1 Corinthians 10 and 9 and 13. Please put it on the monitor. Nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, then died from snake bites. And don't grumble, as some of them did, and then were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. People of God, I can't fall. We can't get left here. We got to keep going. He delivered us out of bondage. And we're going to go through this wilderness. But he's going to get us over to the promised land. We're going to make it. We're going to go over, people of God. We're going to make it. If you're here today, if you want to come to the altar and pray, if you want to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to help me. I got some struggles in my life. It's all right. We all do. You may look at Pastor and say, Pastor, got it easy. No. I got things that I'm dealing with. But I'm going to make it. I'm determined to make it. Are you determined to meet it? If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus, you can come. We'll baptize you tonight. If you want the Holy Ghost, come. If you want to pray through, come. We'll do it. We'll pray. And everyone in this place, if you've heard this message and it has touched your heart right where you are, some of us are going to be leaving. I'm sad to hear that Sister Nicola is going to be leaving. She's going off to school. And I love every individual here. So when I see someone leaving, it does hurt. But she's going to be going over to the New Life Tabernacle Church in Tallahassee. I know she's going to be okay. And if anyone else, those who are leaving, those who feel like I can't be here no more, it breaks my heart. We must go forward. 
And we want to make sure everybody hold on to your faith. Be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, people of God, those who are at the altar. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for delivering us open out of package. We thank you, God, for this message, for your word. We thank you for showing us, God, where we are. I thank you for speaking, oh God. God, I praise you, God, because conviction lets me know that you're dealing with me. If I'm convicted, God, it lets me know that you're dealing with me. Save my soul. Make me right. Make me right, God. Keep me from falling. Keep me from going down the wrong road. Father, I'm ready to react. But keep me from going down that road, God. Father, I'm ready to fight back. But keep me from going down that road. I'm ready to throw in the towel. But keep me, God, from going down that road. God, I, I, I'm having doubt, God. Keep me from going down that road. Father, I'm murmuring. I'm starting to complain. But God, keep me from going down that road. Build me up, God, in this most holy thing. Help me to walk right Help me to talk right. Help me to live right. Help me to do it because I love you. Help me to do it because I love you, God. You and you alone, oh God. I pray lay your hand on us right now. I pray that the saints of God will grow. That we will mature. That we don't stay in the same place. But let us mature. Let us grow. Let us feel your love with one another. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, God. Touch us, God. Save us, God. Deliver us, oh God. Father, help us to go through the wilderness. Go through the life's journey, Jesus. I pray for the marriages. I pray, Lord God, for the single ladies that are feeling like God. They feel like they're by themselves, but you're their father. You're their friend, God. Be there for them, oh God. Provide for them, oh God. I pray for the young men, the brothers, oh God. The husbands that feel like they're alone. Father, let them know. God, what you put together, let no man put us. For we love you. Have your way. And to God be the glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Clap unto God. If you still want to pray, you can pray. But I must see God's face. I must be seen. I love you. We'll be back in the house of the Lord tomorrow, Monday, for Bible study. Come on to Bible study. Tell your friend, I'll see you in Bible study. Lord, help us along this truth in the name of Jesus. If you want to be baptized, come on. We're going to baptize you tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.